Hey you guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bassin. Today we are talking fall bass fishing. To be more specific, we're talking topwater fishing. Poppers, walking baits, whopper ploppers, buzz baits, wake baits. We're covering all of it. Fall is prime time. These big fish are moving up, chasing bait fish. You can catch big bass from now through the entire fall. So we're going to go in depth with some tips and tricks, some things you may not have thought about, unique baits, all the gear that you're going to need. We're covering all of it in today's in-depth look at fall topwater. Fall is prime time for throwing topwater. It is arguably the best topwater bite of the entire year. I personally love that summer frog bite. It's one of my favorite things to do. But when you get into fall, the doors just open up. Now you can catch them on every kind of topwater. You can still get them on buzz baits and wake baits, but you can mix in the whopper plopper, a variety of poppers, all sorts of different walking baits. There are just so many more options. It's an incredible time of year. The reason it gets like this is because the bass are up chasing bait fish. Now, just a few days back, well, maybe a week and a half ago or so, we did an in-depth video explaining what these bass are doing during that fall transition. And that will put the pieces together for you. If you missed it, it will be the first link down in the video description so that you can get all caught up on the theory behind why this is so predictable, why these fish get up and chase bait fish in the shallow water. Also, if you guys haven't subscribed to the channel yet, you need to do that. We do three videos a week and the channel is growing so quickly that a lot of you don't even know that. So three in-depth videos a week, just like what we're doing here. If you don't subscribe and you don't turn on that bell symbol, that notification symbol, you will have no idea when these videos are coming out and you're going to miss a lot of this information that will help you going into fall. So let's jump into it. Starting off, the fall transition doesn't happen overnight. It begins overnight, but the bite will change progressively as the grasses in the shallows die down. So when the bite first kicks off, we're still going to focus on those summer type baits. You can still get away with the frog, but the two that I really prefer to go to are a buzz bait and a wake bait two buzz baits and because we're coming out of summer you guys have seen me harp on these two baits quite a bit but there's all sorts of new things coming here so the two buzz baits that tim and i really like to throw one is going to be that guy right there that dnm slow roller that bait with a quad blade that plastic four blade will go incredibly slow and it just has this nice mild gurgling sound very different than most buzz baits on the other end of the spectrum we throw this one this is that dirty jig skirtless buzz we throw this it's skirtless there's nothing inside there i have one laying right here there's nothing in there that's what it looks like and then i put that river to sea d walker on the back of it to get my profile it's a louder buzz bait with a super natural profile if I've got more grass, I go with that slow roller where I don't have that big bait subsurface. I've just got that skirt. Of course, you could put a stinger hook on here. If I have less grass or I'm fishing around the edges of the grass, I immediately go to that guy right there. Or if I'm up around the docks and the shallows because you can skip these. We've talked about that. You can skip them way back in the cover. Both dynamite options. And then the next one, that wake bait. That's that evergreen noisy docks. They call it the ND180. And you can see I've beat the paint off of this bait. That is a fish catching machine. While you've still got a lot of grass, that's when you've got a lot of the crappie and bluegill and panfish up in the shallows. As that grass dies back, those fish tend to move to deeper haunts. The bait fish go up ultra shallow, but the panfish tend to move off so while they're still up, I take advantage of that wake bait bite. You're throwing it on heavy tackle. I'm using a swim bait rod, heavy braid to a 30 pound mono leader. I'm not messing around, but you can load the boat with this. 
The Noisy Docks has a very unique sound because it's a wooden bait. It has a boot tail on it. It's not a traditional wake bait at all. Throws an amazing wake, moves a lot of water, has a lot of sound, and it, again, a unique sound. It stands out from other wake baits. I do a lot of damage with that bait going into fall. Now, once that grass dies back, I like to throw this on the grass edges. Once that grass starts to die back, I retire it for the year. I put that away and I focus strictly on bait fish. Bait fish is a completely different animal. That's where we start talking about walking baits, poppers, and the whopper plopper. Let's start with the whopper plopper, and then we'll move into the others. Color-wise, again, everything bait fish oriented. So you're talking whites, the ghost colors, silvers, that's where you want to focus your attention. Whether you've got shad in your lake, so you've got big profile bait, you've got little silver sides, a little pond smelt, all that's going to do is determine color and size of the bait, but the concepts are identical across the board. I don't care if you live in the deep south or you're a smallmouth guy on the Canadian border, concepts are identical. So let's talk about the Whopper Plopper. If you don't know what a whopper plopper is, you've been living under a rock. This thing has swept the country in the last few years. But if you don't know, that's okay. You're about to find out. The whopper plopper is a straight retrieve bait. Think buzz bait. You throw it out, but unlike a buzz bait, when a buzz bait hits the water, it sinks. So you have to start right away and get it up on the surface and get it to plane out. The whopper plopper is a floating bait. The land, as you pull it forward, the tail will spin. That's where your action comes from, and it is loud. It's got a very unique action, throws a ton of water, creates an incredible amount of commotion, but again, it's just a straight retrieve bait coming right at you. You can fish it stop and go. There's a lot of different ways to fish it, but my tried and true is just throw it out there, start a steady retrieve, find the speed, slow down or speed up until you find the speed where the bait is at its absolute maximum volume. And it's loud, really loud, but the fish can't stand it, especially in shallow water. I suspect that up in the shallows, that sound reverberates so hard, a lot of times those fish just want the sound to stop because they hit it so much harder than every other top water. They come out and just crush it. And I really think they're just trying to silence it a lot of the time. This is the 130 size. That's kind of the go-to, the standard all over the country. The 130 is a large bait, large hooks, catches giant fish. Now they make bigger, but I really like that 130 size in the fall. Now if your bait fish are a little bit smaller, then there are two more sizes. The 110 for size comparison. There's the 110 next to the 130. Little bit smaller hook, Little bit shorter body overall, and both these baits are completely chewed up. And then one more for you, the 110 compared to the 75. There's a 90 in between these two, but the 90 is a thinner bodied profile. The 75 has that fatter body. I really, really like that size. So if I'm on small bait fish, I'm throwing the 75. If I see the bass, now how do I know I'm on small bait fish? I know that's the next question. You're visibly seeing fish. When you get up in the shallows, you can see bait fish skittering around in the water. Look at how big they are. You may come into a pocket and see the bass blowing up on them. Pay attention to what size bait is flying out of the water, trying to get away from those bass. Or if you're catching fish, you're out there catching bass, whether it's on a topwater or any other bait, Sometimes they spit up bait fish. Anytime that happens, pay attention. You're getting clues. If the bait fish coming out of that fish are two inches long, you're throwing that 75. If they're coughing up big thread fin shad or even gizzard shad or something else, you know you're going full profile. It's that easy. And then again, don't get too caught up on color. That ghost look imitates just about every bait fish in the world. That guy right there, that T1000, Nice bait fish profile, but there's a lot of chrome. Then you get that little bit of chartreuse in the mix. They come unglued for it. That one there stands out solid to the surface. 
in any watercolor. Keep it simple, just stay bait fish. So that's the Whopper Plopper. Regardless of size, it's a chuck and wind bait. It works unbelievably well where your buzz bait did. So the buzz bait you're fishing over the grass. As soon as that grass starts to die down, switch from a buzz bait to a Whopper Plopper because it's an all new sound, it's an all new look. They haven't been seeing it all summer. The Whopper Plopper gets caught up in the grass. That's why you have to wait. That's why no one else has been throwing it. But as soon as you can get that open water, get that bait firing, you will catch big fish on that bait. From there, we transition to the walking bait and to the popper. Again, size and profile is everything. It's going to be a preference thing. If you're in the far north, they crush the smallmouth, love a popper. But there are days that they will just massacre a walking bait. Tim and I had some amazing bites going in Michigan in the fall the last couple of years. We've been out there just crushing them on top water, just absolutely crushing them. But sometimes they want to slow down and eat that popper. So as we get into the heart of fall, as this is progressing, because keep in mind, here we are early September, this information is going to work in parts of the country all the way into December. In other parts of the country, it's going to stop in another month, month and a half. But this is going to work for a while. So you want to be developing your pattern as you go. Every time you go to the lake, pay attention to conditions, pay attention to what you do or don't catch, what they're eating, because as these fish get farther and farther into fall, they're going to pack more and more bait fish into smaller areas, just like that last video taught you. They're going to corral bait and then the massacre is going to take place. So if they're not corralling bait yet, they're just ambushing them at random. You're out there fishing, throwing a worm or anything else, and you see a random blow up. A bass comes up and just chases a bait fish, and then they're gone. What I like to do in that condition is go out in the morning and throw a popper, morning and evening. As we get into that full-blown bait fish frenzy, we start talking more and more about walking baits. So let's start with the popper, then go walking baits. We have to start somewhere, right? Let's start on the bigger end and we'll work down. It's a Mega Bass Pop Max. I really like this bait. It's very, very similar. River to Sea has a bait that's almost identical. They just have some little subtle differences. But this guy right here, I had an amazing time down in Mexico with Tim. We got on a dynamite topwater bite they were crushing this thing. You think Mexico bass, you're thinking giant bass on giant baits, but that's not the case. It can be the case, but sometimes they're eating little bait. And when they're eating little bait, you give them a little offering. This is a dynamite bait because it's got a great walking action, despite being a popper. Now, little tip, some of you already know this, we've talked about it before. Almost every popper, as long as it's a quality popper, if it's well balanced, a popper is designed to be fished by throwing it out and a little pop, 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 pop. I mix either one, two, or three pops and I let it sit. So give it one, let it sit. Give it three, let it sit. But a popper can also be walked, like a little miniature walking bait. It'll sit and walk and it'll walk in a much tighter area than a walking bait. A walking bait has a lot of glide popper doesn't. It'll sit in place and walk. So when those fish don't want to run really far, it's a very unique look. This bait does a phenomenal job of walking. Obviously, I'm not throwing it in a bluegill color in the fall. I just grabbed that one so that I could show you guys the profile. Second one, and this is a really unique bait, Jackal Binksy. What I like about this bait is all the added flash. It's a popper, but you've got a blade on the bottom between your two hooks and you've got a prop here on the back. Both add a ton of sound and flash to the overall profile. This is going to shine when those fish are actually after the bait in the early morning or late evening, when they're coming up and blowing up on bait. We've said time and time again that when they're actually on the bait fish, they're actually on the shad, they're chasing them actively, you have to stand out from the crowd. Throwing a little popper works great, but if they get aggressive, 
and they start chasing hard on those shad, they won't even notice your popper because you're just another shad and there are thousands of them. Flash is everything, especially with shad. Flash can be the difference between getting two or three bites and getting 20 or 30 bites. So the Binksy is a very, very unique bait. It's got rattles in it. It's got good sound to start with. Then you get flash plus that prop. Completely different look and action than any other popper. This one found its way into my arsenal over the last year or two, and I've had a blast with it. Don't be afraid to add that one to your arsenal. Then two more, just little poppers. That's a Damiki D-pop. It's an inexpensive popper, but it's well balanced, fishes extremely well, comes in some great colors, and it's a really good size. That's just that general standard popper profile. I've done really well with that one. Going smaller, that is the little yellow magic. See the difference? Again, we're trying to match the size of the bait fish. So if I'm just picking up a popper to go throw a popper, this is that standard size. That Pop Max is bigger. Binksy, just a little bigger, a little bit thicker profile. And then you go smaller. That little yellow magic when they won't eat anything else. We did a popper video a couple of years ago over on Berryessa. They would kill this thing when they wouldn't even look at anything else because the bait fish they were chasing were about that big. If you'd throw anything bigger than that, it didn't look right. Even when I was trying to throw a Kitek, even a 2.8 Kitek was too big to match the bait fish and they wouldn't eat it. But when I went to that little yellow magic, these fish were coming unglued and they weren't little fish. They were really nice largemouth, but they were focused on a certain size of bait and I had to match that profile. That's why I'm showing you all these options because if you're just going out, just to go have a little bit of fun at your local pond or heading out to the lake on a weekend when you've got a little free time, you just do what you can do. Get out there and have a good time and catch some fish. But if you're a guy that gets the opportunity to get out there and fine tune your pattern and develop it, and you're trying to catch a better than average fish, it's the little things like being able to match that profile that will make huge differences. You'll go from catching a couple fish to catching a bunch of fish, or you'll go from no fish to catching fish. It can make all the difference. And again, that's not to say that a pond guy can't fine tune. You can absolutely fine tune. I'm just saying, if you just get out there for fun once in a while, keep it simple, have fun. If you own a walking bait and a popper and a buzz bait, you're pretty much dialed. You'll have a great time. But if you wanna refine it, that's what we're talking about. Now let's talk walking baits. Uh, we're gonna start with the big ones and then we'll, we'll work into the standard sizes. Two, and of course I forgot one of them because anytime I do a video with this many baits, I have to forget something. But two walking baits, the one I don't have, the, St the Strike King Mega Dog, which is large. It's just a touch bigger than this one, but a standard big walking bait. And this is the Evergreen Shower Blows, but it's the big one, the 150 size. Those two baits are a very large profile. They throw a ton of water. They cover a very large area of water. They're loud. I got hooked on this guy actually chasing Striper. It's got a cupped face, large profile, very strong hooks right out of the package. I don't upgrade my hooks unless I wear these out learned about it with striper and then transitioned it into bass fishing. Same thing with that mega dog, another big profile. It's great for those giant predator fish, but it's awesome for largemouth too. Again, we're trying to match the size of bait fish. So if your bass are up chasing big bait, chasing shiners, chasing hitch, chasing all sorts of different things, gizzard shads, all sorts of different bait fish. If they're on big bait, a big bait will get you your best bite. You need to match the size of what they're eating. Coming down into the standard sizes, that standard walking bait will cover almost everything. I don't throw a lot of the small walking baits because if I need to go to a small walking bait, 
I just switch over to that popper and walk the popper. So I don't see the need personally for the smaller walking baits. I prefer the switch. So three walking baits, and we've talked about these before. I'm just gonna hold them all up here together. Shower Blows 125, River to Sea Rover, Reaction Innovations Vixen. Those three baits, these two are identical. When you put them side by side, they're almost the same bait on the outside, not on the inside. And then that guy, profile wise, all very similar. Sound and action, very different. Shower blows to that cupped face, it's going to throw a lot of water and it's extremely loud. If you want commotion, that's what you throw. If your bass are blowing up on bait and you're trying to fire into the mix and get their attention and draw them away so that you get the bite instead of that shad dying, the shower blows, that's your best commotion. I love that color right there. That mirrored color is just incredible. They've got two or three colors that are dynamite for it. These two, the Rover and the Vixen, identical profiles, totally different sounds. Rover, Vixen. The Rover is kind of an in-between, deeper tone. The Vixen has that higher pitch, tinny, almost glassy sound. Very, very different. And I'm telling you right now, there are days where one will catch them all and the other one will catch nothing. For whatever reason, when we're way up north, fishing up in the Great Lakes region, not necessarily the Great Lakes, but that zone, Wisconsin, Michigan, Minnesota, that Vixen just seems to crush all the others. They eat that thing so well. But you come out here towards the West or in the Midwest, and I found that the Rover with that in-between sound, night and day, that is the bait, day in and day out. If I go to a lake here to throw a walking bait, 100% of the time, I start with a Rover. If they won't eat it, I start experimenting. Or if they start getting crazy blowing up on bait, I switch over to the shower blows. But those three baits, unique profiles, or similar profiles, unique sounds and actions that can make all the difference. I'm gonna come back to some other modifications here in a second, but one more bait, last one. Just a different bait. The actual super spook. The bait that we all threw as kids to catch topwater fish. The super spook is an amazing bait, it still is. A few years back, they came out with the chugging spook. Now the super spook has that deep, one knocker sound. It's just a single big knocker and they're clunk, 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 clunk. Totally different than the other baits I showed you. When I was a kid, I believed that was the greatest sound in the world. It would call those bass up. But over time, I found that refining it a little more with those other baits gives me better action most of the time. But the chug and spook, when they put a cupped face on this, now they dropped a hook. There's only two hooks instead of three which allows me to go to a larger hook, which means when I'm around bigger fish, especially if I'm around striped bass or big largemouth, I have a much better chance of landing my fish on a bigger hook. I'll get a better hook in them, less likely that I'll be bent out as compared to a vixen, with a little size four hook. With that chugging spook face on it where it's spitting water to go with that deep sound, it's like a new bait. I do so much better on the chugging spook than I do on the actual super spook. Just one tip for you. That's the last of the baits. Couple other little things, then we're gonna talk about rods, but two tips. One, you might notice on this guy right here, the red hook. You'll notice on a lot of baits that I've got feathered trailers. If I'm fishing a bait slow, I find that a feathered trailer can really help. If I'm slow walking, or if I'm fishing a popper and I'm letting it sit and that feather spreads out, I feel like it just helps convert. It gives me that little bit of secondary action where the bait has stopped, but the fins are still moving. But if I'm walking a topwater fast, 
I don't think it makes any difference whatsoever. So you'll notice on a lot of my personal baits that it's not there. It's because those are baits that I'm fishing fast. But you will also notice this red front hook. We've talked about this before. I don't think it's even a point to be argued anymore. It's fact. It's been proven over and over and over. When your fish are missing, but they're still aggressive, they're still willing to come up and blow up, put a red hook on the front of your walking bait and more of those fish will come up and eat the front and then they end up getting a second hook in them also and you land more of those fish. If you're throwing black hooks, they might come up and just get the back one and that's your worst case scenario because they come up thrashing and you see all that bait flying out in front trying to rip that hook out. But with a red hook, you can get them to commit right to the front. It's not that it's invisible or any of those crazy things people used to talk about. It's quite the opposite. When fish come up looking to eat, they're looking at that bait fish up there on the surface. They're looking for the place to shoot for. They're looking for the weak spot. And I think when they see that red hook shining in the sunlight, it's just the first thing they see and it's the first thing they aim for. It's just the something different. So over and over again, they'll eat that front hook and you end up with two hooks in them, you will land way more fish. Tip number two, I like to throw a lot of my top water on braid to leader. In the past, everybody threw on mono. Most of us have switched to braid now because it's so much easier to work the bait. If I was throwing a big top water like this, a big walking bait on mono way out there, you have to work that bait so hard to get it to walk, it's miserable. Switch over to braid, just a little wrist movement, you've got great walking action. So we switch to braid. On my straight retrieve baits, I just stay straight braid. No reason not to. But on walking baits or poppers, I put mono leader on. Anywhere from 12 to 25 pound, depending on the size of the bait. You can even go lighter than that. You go down to eight pound with the little popper. But I tie mono leader on. What that does, if you've ever walked a walking bait on straight braided line, especially light line, you'll be walking that bait and all of a sudden it's tangled up and it's coming in backwards and you've blown your cast. And it'll drive you nuts because it will happen over and over and over. The reason that happens is braid doesn't have any memory, meaning it's not rigid. So every time that the bait comes to walk across, the line goes limp and the bait can run right over the line and catch itself and foul up. If you put a length of mono in there, I don't care if it's 18 inches or four feet long, it doesn't matter. The mono is more rigid. It doesn't want to just get limp. It wants to stay pretty rigid and your hooks will glide behind it much better. It won't create a big curly cue that your hooks can catch on. So mono will save you so many headaches. Put 18 inches to four feet of mono in front of your walking bait and 95% of your foul, foul ups are gone. Your baits are going to track extremely well. Same thing with that popper, slow fish in a popper. It just keeps that line straight in front of the bait instead of curling under. Now, let's talk about gear. I just told you I like to throw braid. What sort of rods should you throw topwater on? Obviously, it depends on the type of topwater, but this is a category where that just truly universal, seven foot, seven two, medium action. That just bread and butter bass fishing rod, that all around medium rod will work great. Pair it up with braid, anywhere from 30 to 50 pound braid, it doesn't matter. Again, you're tying a little leader on there, but that is a dynamite way to do it for just about everything except the really big baits and the really small poppers. Now for the poppers, I typically throw them on bait caster, but you can also throw them on spinning gear. Again, it's a category where you don't necessarily have to buy a dedicated rod. You can do extremely well on spinning tackle with a popper. Sometimes when we get in those smallmouth lakes where we're just crushing the fish, just wailing on them, I'll switch over to a spinning rod because it's just more fun. You can still walk the bait 
or you can slow fish it, either one, but it works dynamite on like 10 to 15 pound braid on your favorite standard spinning rod, a drop shot rod, a shaky head rod, anything like that. But two other rods that have really stood out for me. This guy right here, 610 medium. I throw the shaky head on it in the summertime. I throw my jerk bait on it. That's where you've heard that 610 medium before. Hands down, my favorite jerk bait rod that I have ever owned. That X Pride 610 medium. Well, it also works great for throwing the entire smaller half of the topwaters. From the tiniest poppers all the way up to my walking baits, it's dynamite. That short rod, six foot, 10 inches, is easy to walk without hitting the water. It's a medium action, so I can load up on those fish and keep them penned. Because you're fishing treble hooks, you don't need a big stout rod. So it's a great carryover. I'm able to take my jerkbait rod that I use in the fall and the spring, and some in the winter, and I'm able to repurpose it the rest of the year. I throw my shaky heads on it in the summer, on fluorocarbon, and then as soon as I'm ready to switch over and just go top water, I strip all this line off, put light braid on, and I'm ready to go all the way up until I get back to throwing the jerk bait. It's a really good way to repurpose the rod. And then last but not least, your bigger baits. The bigger walking baits, and particularly the whopper plopper. I've struggled to find the ideal rod for the whopper plopper until uh, about a year and a half ago, Tim actually figured out the difference. We figured out that this bait fishes so well on our deep crankbait rods. I mean, really well. And it makes sense, right? It's a large bait, two large treble hooks. It's just on the surface instead of on the bottom. But a seven and a half to eight foot deep cranking rod, but with braided line, is phenomenal. When they come up and eat that bait and turn, that rod loads up. And you know how a crankbait rod is, it'll fold in half on those fish. It's done an amazing job of keeping those fish pinned. Little fish and giants, sevens, eights, really big fish. Giant striper too. I like to throw this evergreen shower blows, the big one, on that deep crank rod. It feels a little funny at first because it's so tippy, that rod will flex so much. But as soon as a giant comes up and eats it and you load up, you just know, I don't care if it's a 20 pounder, those hooks aren't coming out because I've got that whole crankbait rod working for me. So again, you can repurpose your crankbait rod, get it to work in a whole nother season, in a whole nother way, and put a lot of big fish in the boat. All right, guys, we're gonna wrap it up there. I hope this helps you. That was a lot of baits and a lot of gear. I'm gonna link all of it down in the video description for you. I'll keep it very simple. I'll list the baits. I'll even give you color recommendations, hook replacements, We'll make it as simple as possible. But to recap, stick with your summer baits as long as the grass is on the surface. Buzz baits and wake baits in particular are going to continue the longest. But as soon as you can switch over that whopper plopper and then switch in to the popper and the walking bait is going to carry you all the way through the fall. You're gonna have a lot of fun in the upcoming months just like we are. I'm sure you'll see us throwing these baits a lot in the near future, but we wanted to get you guys clued in ahead of time so that you're not seeing it after the fact. You're on the bite at the same time we are. Guys, if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button. Again, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you soon.